The world is quickly shifting from 2D interfaces to immersive 3D environments. And as a UX designer, you don't want to get left behind. With big investments happening in XR technology, like Apple's Vision Pro and Meta's Orion, it's clear to me that this shift is real and it's happening fast. The question is, do you want to be prepared for this future or do you want to risk being stuck in the past? In this video, I will break down the fundamental differences of designing for flat screens and designing for entire immersive worlds. I will show you how to shift your mindset to think spatially, based on my real world experience, not just based on trends or hype. I'm Anna and I've been working in both UX and XR for the last several years. Our team at Immersive Insiders works with XR companies like Meta, as well as enterprises like Cupra, Puma and Zalando to help them include XR in their projects. I also run workshops on XR design regularly, so I think you're in good hands. Let's get started. The difference between designing for a flat screen and designing for an entire world around you. Let's break it down. Flat versus spatial layouts. When designing websites or apps, we have some kind of fixed grids or constrained layouts, right? Everything fits neatly into columns and rows, but in XR, it's infinite space. So no more neat little containers. So suddenly you're not just thinking about what's on the screen, you are thinking about where things exist in space. You can place objects anywhere, like in front, behind, above, below, to the right, to the left, but with great power comes great responsibility. So think twice if you really, really want to place content behind your user. It might eventually be an interesting idea to use for a VR escape room to place some like, subtle hints. But in most cases, it's pretty bad, especially when you're displaying warnings and errors. So stick to the front. Camera and perspective. In digital 2D design, the perspective is fixed. So here's your one and only viewpoint, enjoy. But in 3D games and in XR as well, the user moves in a lot of instances. So the design has to be functional and has to work from a lot of different angles. Interaction shift. The way we interact with our phones and laptops is pretty limited. We have touch screens, we have keyboards, we swipe, we click, we might use voice commands. But in XR, the way we interact with the content changes dramatically. So you can grab a virtual cup just the same as you would grab a physical one. You can use your gaze or gestures to interact with your environment. In XR, interactions become much more intuitive and physical. You are literally using your entire body to engage with things around you. And this shift means we need to think carefully about how we let our users interact with objects seamlessly without causing frustration or overwhelm. Spatial awareness. When designing a website, we also have to think about the context the user is in while using it. So what time of day is it? What device are they using? Might they feel stressed or anxious? Where might they be while using the website? And especially the last point is super important in XR and gets amplified because spatial awareness is key. The user is moving around a lot of times, not just in the virtual world, but in the real world as well. So they need to be aware of their physical surroundings. Good XR design not only incorporates safe boundaries and play areas, but also lets the user choose between room scale, seated, and standing experiences. Feedback mechanisms. When you interact with a website, you get lots of visual cues like a button changing colors when you click it. A mobile app might also include audio feedback or subtle vibrations, depending on what you're doing. In XR, your senses are being engaged much more. Including multiple feedback mechanisms can not only reduce the need to rely on visual cues alone, but it can also make the virtual world feel much more real. Haptic feedback through controllers or self-tactile feedback when using your hands is a great way of telling the user that they are interacting with an object right now. My dear teammate Ashray is actually working on a video series about haptic feedback right now, so I will link it in the description below and you can check it out. Then there's spatial audio. So imagine you are in VR and something is happening to your right. You will just naturally tilt your head and see what's happening over there, just like in real life. Core design principles for XR. All right, now that we've got the basics, let's talk about some core design principles that every XR app will benefit from. First up, scale. So designers need to think about the physical space and make sure that virtual elements are properly scaled. Imagine having a nice little chair that's actually the size of a skyscraper. In XR, getting the proportions right is crucial. You need to make sure that the elements in your 3D space are functional and feel real. Next, comfort and motion. I cannot stress this enough. Comfort is king in XR. We've all heard of or experienced some of these motion sickness horror stories ourselves. To avoid making your users feel disoriented and motion sick, 
Try to avoid any rapid and especially involuntary movement. Have steady frame rates of at least 90 frames per second and include multiple movement mechanisms like teleportation or world pulling, smooth locomotion, etc. Also, respecting a user's personal space is especially important in all kinds of multi-user applications. In 2D, visual hierarchy is based on size, color, proximity, contrast, etc. But in 3D, it's also about distance. The closer something is to the user, the more attention it demands. All right, let's have a quick recap. Designing for XR means thinking spatially. Unlike 2D design, where everything happens on a flat surface, XR design also involves things like depth, distance, and at times a fully immersive environment. Users can move around, look at things from different angles, and interact with objects in ways that feel much more natural than ever before. As designers, we need to think about how users navigate and understand the space and make sure to properly guide them through the experience. User comfort is especially critical in XR, and the shift from taps and clicks to gestures, gaze interactions, spatial input demand intuitive design approaches. Now I want to hear from you. What has been your biggest challenge when moving from 2D to XR design? Comment below, share your experience and maybe some tips and tricks you picked up along the way they might help others as well. And if you're ready for more, hit the subscribe button because in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about how to make XR experiences feel even more real. Also, check the description for a link to join the XR Design Challenge starting in December, 2024. See you in the next one.